Welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're going to be replacing the catalytic converter on this Kia Rio. Now this Kia Rio has the Hyundai 1.6 liter four cylinder. So if you have any of the other vehicles that they made that utilize that engine, it would be the same process. But this particular vehicle is a 2013 Kia Rio. Let's go ahead and get started. Now this particular engine is very easy to do the catalytic converter on. Some other vehicles, it's a lot more involved. Sometimes you have to do welding, things like that. I did one on a 5.3 liter V8 uh, General Motors engine on a Chevy Trailblazer. I'll have that link down in the, uh, across the top, also down in the description if you wanna check that out just for, for the knowledge. But this vehicle here is actually pretty easy. You can get to the exhaust manifold fairly easy here from the top. And then there's two bolts down underneath where it connects to the exhaust pipe going in uh, towards the muffler that we'll have to do as well and then the o2 sensor the upstream which is also easily accessible so i'm going to get a close up here and just kind of show you where everything is and then i'll be back to show you all the things you're going to need in order to complete this and then we'll get down to business for starters we need to remove this engine cover which just has four little tabs just give it a good pull pop it off and we can get that out of the way so we can see everything Let me bring the camera in here up close so we can identify the things, then we'll go underneath and take a look at the connection there. Coming in here, you'll see this line right there. That's our upstream O2 sensor. Your O2 sensors, let's bring the camera back here, they connect right here. So you have the black one is your upstream, the gray one underneath is your downstream, which is below the catalytic converter. But if we follow this along, we'll see right there, is our O2, get a better shot here. There's our O2 sensor. So we'll have to remove that. That's very easy to take that off. Then you have this heat shield right here. This heat shield on top of all that. And if you see there, we have a connection there. It's a connection there. And I believe there's one further down right there. And we'll pop those off. And once we get into it, we'll go over the, the sizes of sockets and bolts and stuff that we're dealing with. But that's what gets removed. And then we have our catalytic converter is under there. If we look right here, you can kind of see it. It's kind of covered by the heat shield, but you can see right there where it connects to the exhaust manifold, and you have your exhaust manifold gasket in there. You have um, those connection points there with all those uh, nuts and studs, and going along that way. And once we get the heat shield off, you'll be able to see it better. But let's head underneath, and I'll show you the other part where it's connected. Taking a look underneath, there's our muffler coming along here. Is our pipe. And you want to work your way all the way. Let me move the camera in here. All the way up into there. That's where our catalytic converter connects. There's our downstream O2 sensor. We don't need to remove that, but sometimes getting it out of the way can help. But we'll see. But you have a nut right there. If we come here on this side, there's the other one all the way up there. So once we disconnect it there and at the exhaust manifold, then that catalytic converter can come right out. All right, so we saw what we're getting into. It's really important to get your vehicle off the ground. It helps a lot. What I have it on here are some Rhino ramps. If you wanna see a product review I did for those, I'll have a link across the top, also down in the description. You don't wanna rely strictly on those, so I do have some jack stands in place as well. Anytime you're going under the vehicle, you wanna be safe. But that's where everything is located. So let me show you now all the things that'll be needed to complete this, and then we'll start swapping it out. Obviously, you're going to need your replacement catalytic converter. And with this vehicle here, because it's a small, small engine, it's all connected. You have your exhaust manifold, catalytic converter, all in one piece, which is pretty cool. As a result, it's a lot cheaper than when you're doing other vehicles with the larger catalytic converters and the exhaust pipes, all that. So you'll need your catalytic converter, Normally, they'll come with the gaskets for the exhaust flange and then for the exhaust manifold. If not, highly recommended you get those while you have everything off. It's a good idea to replace those. Next, you will need a ratchet. You will need a 7 8 O2 socket for removing the oxygen sensor, the upstream. You will need a 13 millimeter, 14 millimeter, and a 17 millimeter. Um, as you can see here, these are the deep sockets. You will need those. I do also have here a 10 millimeter. And this one here is a 13 millimeter, just regular ones. You'll need those as well. And then I do have some extensions here. Now these are impacting extensions because 
depending on how seized up your, your bolts are and the nuts, you may need to break out an impact wrench. So it's a good idea to have those on hand, but this is what you'll need right here to complete this. We're gonna start by removing the upstream O2 sensor, but one thing that you wanna keep in mind is if you just drove your vehicle, you might wanna wait a little bit because that whole exhaust piece there is extremely hot. You don't, you don't wanna be getting burned. So we let the car cool down a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna get a close up, is I'm gonna remove the O2 sensor so that way we can remove that heat shield and then start hitting the, um, all of those uh, nuts and studs that are along the exhaust manifold and then we'll end off down at the bottom where it connects to the exhaust pipe. I'm gonna use this adapter here. Um, they make other ones as well for removing O2 sensors, but worst case scenario, if you don't have the right socket, you can always use a 7 8 wrench, get a good grip on it and get it off that way. But I found these work the best. So let's put this one here and then we'll unplug the harness and then we'll be able to pop that out. Here's the plug for the upstream. So this side here slides out. There's a little tab underneath that will push in and then we'll be able to slide it out like that. Disconnect that, but we are gonna slide this off of this so we can fully get this O2 sensor out of the way. There we go. Put this over here. These can be on tight sometimes, so you may have to work it, but get a good grip on it. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, we should be able to take it off by hand. Let's see here. Okay. All right, here's our O2 sensor, the upstream. We'll put that off to the side. Sometimes these can be pretty tight. This one here was pretty easy. I was able to just get it off by hand, but sometimes you may want to use a breaker bar, things like that if it's too tight. If you want to see some videos I've done on uh, pertaining to O2 sensors as far as how to clean them, just kind of understanding them more and you know, upstream, downstream, all that stuff, I'll have links across the, um, the bottom in the description where you can check those out. But now let's remove the heat shield. These are 10 millimeter bolts holding that on. You have one here, one there, and then one all the way down there. So all you need is a 10 millimeter socket and you can pop these off. Okay. All right. Let's see here. It's already getting loose. Now to get to this one, it looks further away in this video than it really is. But we can just take this, just go right down here on it. I'm going to have to use uh, both hands because I got to come in on the other side, so we'll be back. There we go. Before you try to pull it out, you have your downstream O2 sensor that's connected here. And this little tab, there's one further down. Uh, let's see if I can go down there and get it. There we go, slide that off. And now if we pull back here, we can grab this and pull this out.
Heat shield is off. Now we have a better look. Let me show you now the catalytic converter and all the attachment points. Now you can get a better look. But if we come down here, let's see if we can see it. These are 13 millimeter nuts. You have nine of them. You have one, two, three, four, one in the middle there. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. So those nine are holding this to the exhaust manifold. Your gasket is underneath. So it's a good time to replace that while you're gonna have this off, but that's how it looks. And that's your catalytic converter. That's where our upstream O2 sensor was going in. Our downstream is all the way down there. So let's start taking this off. These can be on there pretty tight. However, these are coming off a little bit easier. So let's see. Want to be careful you don't lose the washer either. you can see it better this little tab here that's where the heat shield was bolting onto you saw how we removed that one so now we're going to do the other eight I'm not going to film the whole thing so we already showed you where they're located so I'm going to take those off and then we'll be back to take a look and I'll show you how it looks with everything off and then we'll head underneath to do the last two Wanted to show you this one here in particular. You can see I'm using a deep socket and we're still having to kind of weave our way through the pipes there to get to it. This is probably one of the hardest ones to get to. And once we have that out of the way, reaching underneath here is just really hard. You just gotta be patient and you can get it. Just gotta be patient accessing it and removing it. You can also access these from underneath um, if you want to. I just reach down from the top. For me, it's easier instead of having to climb underneath, but it's up to you. But as you can see, you can access these very well. Um, see the other side. Now, when you come over here, you got a little more obstruction to get up in there in order to reach those. So it's up to you how you want to do it. I removed seven already. Here's the last two. This one right back here in that corner. And then that one tucked right there. And then that'll take care of this connection here to the exhaust manifold. And then if we look down, you'll see also we have that heat shield. We're going to remove that once we get the old catalytic converter off. That'll go on to our new one. Here on the very bottom, you have that last connection there that holds the catalytic converter, which you can see right there. Uh, that's kind of like a little mounting bracket that connects right here on these sides, but we'll just be undoing that, that bolt right there to free it up. The last nut all the way down here on the bottom, and I'll show you. So we removed everything. And we've got that last one all the way back there. So we got that one there on the far corner, right here. That one's done. It's the one right here next to it. Because of all the twisting in all the pipes, I used a long socket with a small extension just to get some clearance through that. That's what I found was the best way, because even from underneath, that's a hard one to get to. So with that now in place, we can remove it.
And here's a shot of it here so you can see which one we're talking about. All right. That was the last nut coming off of there. It is a little tricky. you got to navigate around those pipes. But with, as we saw, different lengths of extensions and, and uh, deeper sockets, you'll need some shorter sockets, as we saw earlier on with uh, some other things. You'll get that off. So let's head underneath now. We're going to remove the two nuts that connect the flange to the exhaust pipe. And then we can just remove that last one to that mount for the catalytic converter. And then this should come right out. Looking at these here, those are 17 millimeter nuts. You have the one there that we saw earlier, and then you have the one right up there. So what I'm going to be using is just this, this deep socket here. That way we have this, this space to get up in there. And we'll use a little extension on it, and we should be able to, to reach it and then get those off. As you can see on this vehicle, the, uh, the nuts are really seized on there, rusted on there. I have replacement nuts and studs. So we're going to swap them out, but I need to break these free. So I'm going to use an impact gun as well to see if we can't loosen them out, uh, break them free from that, and then we'll pull those out. Okay, got that one off. Now we got to try to get that top one off. It's a little trickier. Now, to get to this top one, you can remove this panel down here, if you can see it, if you want to, but I'm not going to go through all that headache and do that. So, what I've done is just kind of created a little concoction here with some impact sockets and extensions, and I'll show you what I've done. So, I've got it going along the top, right there, and then working all the way back here to my impact gun. Now, what I'm using here is just a cheap little Chicago Electric electric impact gun that I picked up at Harbor Freight years ago. Every time I feature it in videos, I get comments from people saying that it's junk. However, I've had it for years and it works great. I do have some way more powerful impact ones, but I like using this one because it's more practical. And if that doesn't work, then I'll move up to a pneumatic or something with more, more torque. But you can see here on the bottom, that bottom one was removed using this same concoction. Um, so what I am going to do now is remove the top one. So I'm going to film this. So let's see if I can get a shot of it as we do it. And we're going to go ahead and remove it. Finally got that off. Like we saw, had to use the um, impact wrench on that to get that off. That one came off also with that. Both of these were seized on pretty good. Here's a better look at the concoction that I had going on here. So we had, looks like a 12 or 13 inch, had a 3 inch, and then another small 3 inch adapter, and then a, um, a deep socket, um, impact socket that we were using. All this together to reach around that exhaust pipe to get to that top nut on the flange to get it off. As we saw, this little cheap Chicago Electric uh, did the job. If it wasn't going to work, then I was going to get one of my more powerful ones. But I use this one a lot, and it works good. If you want to see a product review I did on it, I'll have the link across the top, also down in the description. But we got it off. So next thing we have to do is just get that, that last nut that's holding the catalytic converter onto that mount, and then we can pull it out. From the flange, moving this way. That's what we're going to be removing now. And that's a 14 millimeter bolt. So we'll go ahead. Now with the flange, nuts removed, we have it all the way up there. You can see where it meets the exhaust manifold. All that's disconnected. We removed it here from the, the mount. You can see it's completely loose. So we can remove this. So let's head up top so we can pull that out. See here, we can pull it this way. Remove it from those studs. And then we're also going to be pulling it this way so we can get it completely out. 
So if you remove it like this, you can see there's your exhaust manifold gasket. And then you can slide that out. You can put the new one in if you're just doing your gasket. You don't have to remove it from the exhaust flange. You can leave that connected. You're just going to remove the bottom mount. And then right here at the exhaust manifold, you can swap out the, the gasket easily. Okay. Can we now lift it this way. We'll pull it off those studs, and this will come right out. And pull it loose. Now, you do have a gasket here in between this flange. You can see it here loose. It's a good idea to replace that as well while you have this off. Here's a shot from the bottom. You can see there going up. There's our gasket to the exhaust manifold. You can see where we're pulling the exhaust manifold off right there. Get a good shot of it there. And then coming down here, here's the exhaust flange. That's it. It's your catalytic converter and your exhaust manifold all in one. We'll take this heat shield off, put it on the new one, and install the new one. Here's how it looks. Everything removed. And looking down here. There's our downstream O2 sensor and the flange there. And there's our mounting, the mounting um, support for the catalytic converter. We have this heat shield here. It's held on by two 12 millimeters on one side, two on the other side, so a total of four 12 millimeters. We're going to pop that off and move it to our new one. So. Heat shield is on. We also put the studs in where it connects to the exhaust flange. And here's our old one here. I'm going to start putting this one in place so we can start bolting it down. I'm going to take the new gasket. We're going to slide it into position here. Line it up with the studs. There we go. Bring it down here. And it just drops right on. See it's there. And working our way down this way. Same thing, just slide it on. And that's it. What I'm going to do is slide it down in gently, the same way we took it out, and then we'll hand tighten the nuts here on the exhaust manifold side. We'll go down at the bottom, put the gasket on the flange, hand tighten that as well, then we'll come back and tighten and torque everything up properly. You can see the gasket in place. We have this mounted on the studs, going all the way down. Here you can see it. So I'm going to hand tighten now the nuts on there, just to hold it in place, and then we'll head down to the lower end, and then we'll make that attachment down there where the flange connects. All right, as you can see, all of these have been attached and hand tightened. So next, we're going to head down and put in the um, exhaust flange gasket and get that hand tightened. Then we'll be back to uh, torque everything properly.
and then um, reinstall the heat shield in the O2 center and wrap this up. And I'll show you what I did. Let me see if I can get a shot here on this side. But you'll notice I removed the studs. That way I have a little more flexibility to move this around. Uh, we were hitting it here as I was adjusting it up top, and it was just getting in the way. So now we can put the stud through, and then we'll put the gasket through and tighten it. Unfortunately, I can't show that because I need both hands, so we'll be back to see it when it's completed. Here we are. We have the studs put in. Here's our gasket. Now let's check the other side. Same thing there. See it here. Next, I'm going to put the nuts on here, and we'll hand tighten those. All right, so we have both of these nuts in place here on the flange, the gasket's in. So let's head up to the top, and uh, we'll start torquing those. Then we'll come down and torque these. We'll mount it to the um, to that support. Uh, base under here, and then we'll put everything back. Now that everything has been hand tightened, we're ready to go back around and torque everything properly. But what I wanted to show you is there's a certain sequence that you want to torque where the exhaust manifold gets tightened up. So we have this hole here in the middle. You want to start off with that one. Then this is your second one, your third one, your fourth one, fifth one, six, seven, eight, and nine. And here's a diagram. So now that that's in place, we're going to go around and we're going to torque all those. Now you want to torque them to 30 foot-pounds of torque. So that's what we're going to torque, all of those nuts. And then we'll come back to go underneath and we'll talk about that one at that point. So let's start torquing this and tightening all up. Based on the sequence that we just reviewed, we're starting off right here with this one here in the middle. And then there's the rest of it from there. So we'll take our torque wrench. Now, to properly torque some of those lower nuts on the exhaust manifold, you're going to need to get to it from the bottom. Now, to do so, we have this, uh, this support here for the catalytic converter. We have these other two nuts that are also 14 millimeters. We're going to take those off so we can remove this whole plate. That will give us access to be able to get up in there with our torque wrench and torque those down properly. To get to it from the top, you can try it, but it's a little tricky weaving through those pipes like that. We are now ready to torque these down. These need to be torqued at 43 and a half foot-pounds of torque. You've got that one here and that one up top. So I'm going to torque those and then we'll be back. These two have been torqued down properly. So let's attach the bolt that holds the catalytic converter to the mount. And then we can head up top and put the heat shield on and then reattach the O2 sensor. Everything's been put back, all three of those um, bolts, now that everything has been torqued properly. Now that everything has been put back, everything is torqued properly down at the exhaust flange, up here at the exhaust manifold, gaskets have been put back in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to reinstall the heat shield. I'm not going to show how to do that. Same way that we took it off at the beginning, we're going to put the three 10 millimeter bolts back on, and then we'll end off by putting the upstream O2 sensor, and then we want to make sure that you feed the, the downstream and the upstream O2 sensor cables through here. That way they're not resting on the, the hot exhaust. You want them on these spacers. So I'm going to put this in, and then we'll be back. All three of the heat shield bolts have been put in. And next we're going to put, and I'll show you right here, right here, 
is where our O2 sensor is going to go. I'm not going to go into details on that. I'm just going to put it in, and then we'll be back to wrap this up. If you want to see a video in-depth on how to replace the O2 sensor on this vehicle, I'll have a link across the top, also down in the description. But I'm going to put that in, get it all tightened properly and connected, and then we'll be back. O2 sensor is in place. And if we pan back here, we have everything in the correct spacers, the downstream, upstream, and then we've got everything connected here at the harness. Everything is good. We'll put the engine cover back on. Little tabs that it goes on. There we go. Everything is good. Let's go ahead and start it up. Everything is running good, but I am going to show you something here. When you put a new catalytic converter on, you need to kind of run it and let it kind of burn itself through. You'll get some smoke at the beginning. Sometimes people get concerned with, with that. That's normal. You want to just let it clear itself out. And once it heats up and goes through that, that'll clear out. But take a look at this. All right, well that wraps up this video on how to replace the catalytic converter on a Kia Rio or any vehicle utilizing the 1.6 liter four cylinder made by Hyundai. I hope this video was informative for you. I hope it helped you out with any projects that you're working on. Please send me any questions, comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I appreciate all the support. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.